Hi, I'm Katie and this is episode 63 of Ornamentations coming to you from a new location. As you can see, I have changed my setup and I am filming next to my tree today to hopefully try and give you a better look at it because it really is a labor of love. Most of the ornaments are handmade either by myself or my mom and it's hard to really show it on just a quick holiday decorating tour because it's vertical and YouTube only allows for horizontal. So as you can probably guess from the setting, today is all about a holiday. I have some Christmas stitching to share with you. I have some finishes, I have some whips, I have some plans, super fun and sparkly things to share with you as well as a treasured holiday decoration that we haven't looked at before on this channel. I didn't make it, but it's beautiful, cherished, and I love it, so I thought I would share it to you. That'll be towards the end, so if it's not for you, then just uh, go ahead and skip it. I also have a new extra video up, which is how I cross stitch. I just sat and stitched for a little bit under my overhead mount and talked about what I do and why. So if you've ever been curious about what I do in terms of my stitching, what I recommend, then go and check it out. And then one thing from that has come up, several people have requested a tutorial for wet blocking for cross stitch. And that actually already exists. That's number eight in the Simple Harmony tutorial series. So there I was blocking the lid from the box. The procedure is the same, whether you're doing a small piece, a large piece, a Simple Harmony box. The only difference is for that, because the box pieces were quite large, I made a special blocking board designed to accommodate those larger pieces, particularly the long side of the box. And you can actually use a pre-bought blocking board like that knitters use. The one thing about those is that because knitting is necessarily more open than a tightly woven linen weave, the lines are not as dark or as thick as you would get on a blocking board like the one I used in the Simple Harmony tutorial. It can be a little harder to see under linen, especially if it's a higher count. So one thing to keep in mind, but you can't beat that for ease of use. And then last news item, holiday kits, huge success. I just can't thank you enough. It's been Oh, just amazing. The Noah's Christmas art kits have now sold out and there are only a very few finishing packs remaining on the restock of the silk wrapped pearl finishing kits. Pre-orders are going to be shipping out this week and then once those are gone, that will be it. We did have an early Christmas miracle. Some of you saw this on Instagram and that is that the size for that larger silk wrapped pearl coordinating with the special green came in and so I've been able to put out full double scallop finishing packs. For those of you who bought the initial run or just one extra pearl, I am also selling extra just boxes of the size for silk wrapped pearl on pre-order and those will be later to ship because um, the distributor shuts down for a couple weeks over the holidays and I'm having trouble keeping up with the orders as they come in. But just the standalone finishing packs on pre-order will all be shipping this week. And since that's it on this color, <laughs> I can't believe it. That was an entire manufacturing run. This is just crazy. It's awesome. I mean, I love it. I'm so thrilled that so many of you are taking the leap and willing to try out this really wonderful and special thread that I think does make for a wonderful finishing technique. But since demand was so high, we are looking at bringing the color back for some Christmas in July finishing packs. And then I have also commissioned a new color to be released for holiday 2024 with the holiday kits, but that will be it for now on this screen once the remaining pre-order finishing packs have sold. Demand on this is just been, oh my gosh, higher than I ever would have dreamed. And then, oh, let's talk about my current stitching because I do have some stitching to share and not just 
my treat. And so the last time I saw you, I had started twice Heartstring Samplery. Baby, it's cold outside, and I was proceeding on Legacy Linen 38 count cloister cream. So what happened here is I was having a great time with this. I really do love this chart despite all the letters, and I hate stitching letters, but I was doing it. I had my big girl pants on, and I was stitching letters. So I was chugging away, I was feeling it, I was loving the colors, I was thinking about all the sequins I was gonna put on this, on this piece once I finished it. And then I was hit with the sudden and overwhelming urge to make ornaments. I didn't want to do anything except work on my tree. It happens every year, you know. You don't get a tree like this unless you spend a lot of time making ornaments pretty much. So that was probably inevitable. But anyways, I was pretty far through Baby It's Cold Outside when I got hit with the I have to make ornaments, I have to make ornaments right now. And so I decided that I was gonna jettison the border. Not because I don't like the border, but because I really wanted to move on to ornaments. So <laughs> yeah, the border got deep six for time, but I think it actually works really well as a pillow without the border. I did make a few other changes. I eliminated the tree on this side and then here, I changed the trees to um, just little adoptive ones from Not Forgotten Farm, Parson Brown. And then as you can see, oh yes, I added sequins. And we'll talk about sources a little bit later in the episode. But the way that you do this, some people have asked, is that you do all of your stitching you block your piece, you get it totally ready for finishing, iron-on interfacing if you're using it, which is actually a really good thing if you are going to over embellish the piece, just it adds a little extra heft to your linen to secure your thread and your embellishments. You do not want to pop one of them off, especially when you're doing your finishing. I've done it, it sucks. And then, and only then, after you're completely ready to do your final finishing, and then you stitch on your embellishments. And then they look fabulous. I love it. Do you love it? I love it. I, I'm just, I'm so into it. That's why I didn't just throw this aside when I was seized with the overwhelming urge to stitch ornaments because it really is such a great piece. I couldn't wait to sparkle up that roof. I wanted to have this done. So I just zipped right through and then moved on to ornaments. My planned companion stitch, Not Forgotten Farm Parson Brown, which I want to do on Legacy Linen 37 Count Smoke Signal, the new linen color that I showed you in the last episode. That's still happening, but I think it'll probably wait until probably late January after the tree is down and I can't add to it. Or I don't know, maybe I'm just gonna stitch ornaments until the end of time. It's totally possible because right now I'm just, oh, I'm really feeling the ornaments. I can't even contemplate things that don't go on my tree. But I do definitely still wanna stitch this. It's just going to be a little bit delayed. And so then, once I had finished Baby It's Cold Outside, I abbreviated baby it's cold outside i moved on to not forgotten farm basket of cheer because i thought this would be a perfect candidate for a embellished crystal hanger i knew exactly what i wanted to use the color here is called scarlet and I chose my threads to go with it because there is a coordinating red gold lens that is a perfect match to this color. And this is where I am, which is pretty far along. I hope to finish this within the next couple days, get it finished and hang it on the tree because all I wanna do is have new things to hang on my tree right now. And so I did end up compressing the color scheme. There are fewer colors than are called for because those two greens just shade together beautifully. You don't need anything more in my opinion. 
I do have Bichu white gold glint there in the center of the poinsettia and then I used a surfine and accentuate combination to top off the trees. I am also going to add beads on the finish itself as well as the crystal hanger. I can see this finish in my head and I cannot wait to share it with you. I would also like to know just how much I love those trees. Those little extra straight stitches are such a simple, easy thing to do, and they just add so much detail. I love it. I'm definitely going to keep the chart out because I might want to sub trees on other patterns with these just because they're so gorgeous. It's such good design. And I might actually stitch it again next year in a slightly different colorway and do a hello finish to add to a display. I think that would just be gorgeous, but this is going on my tree. It's stitched on Legacy Linen 38 count Irish coffee. I'll post the conversion for the description and for baby it's cold outside as well. And I would note that all of the threads in here have featured in past kits and conversions. So if you've been following along with me, if you've bought some of my kits, you may already have everything that you need to stitch this and you know these can be great ways to use up threads and remnants this i didn't actually cut from a larger piece of linen this was exactly what i pulled out of my linen drawer i'm kind of weird about remnants i keep them even when they're small and i take a particular delight in finding ways to use them it's just really satisfying to find a way to make something useful that otherwise would have gone to waste and oh it's gonna look great once I get the beads and then the red crystal hanger on it I am just oh I'm so into it so hoping to get that finished and up on the tree this week and then I'm also going to once I finish that because seriously this is really really close to being done oh should have said you might be able to tell I did make some changes. So I eliminated the date and then just moved the center tree down to compensate for that. And then eliminated the good cheer at the top, which you could certainly stitch. It makes the square instead of rectangular and that's kind of nice. But I've been stitching a lot of letters lately and I hate that. So this was me asserting my personality. So and that's basket of good cheer, which I have really been enjoying. I just, I love that. And then next is going to be Not Forgotten Farm Cinder Claws. So my friend Laura, the serial starter, shared this pattern with me earlier this week. We have been chatting a lot about our Christmas stitching because we are both hepped up about Christmas stitching as well, you know, if you watch them this weekend and oh, I love this guy. How did I not already have this? This is fantastic. So this is definitely going to be my next start. He's small. He'll work up quickly. He'll be on my tree before very long. So I am all about it and then I'm also going to stitch this on fox and rabbit desert taipan for the most sickly sentimental reasons because it was a gift from Karen and Bren and Laura shared the chart with me so this is even though I'm stitching it myself going to be something that I can hang on my tree as a reminder of stitchy friends and how 2023 has just been such a great year for that in which I got to meet so many of them, including Laura and Karen and Bren for the first time in person and how fun that has been. I'm really looking forward to going back to the attic in January and seeing some old friends again and meeting new ones. And that's been something that's entered my life this year, just getting out more in the stitching community it's been great and so yeah I'm, I'm 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 sentimental i want to commemorate that and hang it on my tree and what better way than with this adorable pattern i'm gonna give him a really really vibrant red gold lens i'm going to do the ho 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 and be shoe so it sparkles and then i am going to give him a fluffy sparkly beard like with my sparkle prim 
temporary school it's gonna be fabulous so look for this i hope by the time i see you again that i'll have a finish i'll have multiple finishes all the ornaments coming out of my ears because that is what will make me really 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 happy because i don't have my couch around me where i can just spread everything out i'm gonna pause this <laughs> so i can move on to the next set of things i have to show you oh we've got katie the red-nosed reindeer here it is a overcast raining wet day and it makes my nose run anyways i do have another plan stitchy plan for a stitchy start that's incredibly not an ornament and that is stacy nash it's a wonderful life thank you john this is going to be my christmas eve start it's not an ornament, you might say, Katie. No, it's not, but that's because they do need a bigger project because they usually get a pretty good amount of stitching done on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So our tradition is that we gather together for a nice dinner on Christmas Eve. My mom makes the dinner, I make the dessert. This year I'm going to be baking my famous ginger spice cookies. And then after dinner, we sit together and we watch a movie. Everybody else just sits around and eats dessert during the movie. I sit and stitch because I can't just sit there and not be working on something I am incapable of it. And then Christmas is an all day event. We get together and we open presents in the morning and then we have a nice brunch. My dad makes his famous pancakes. And then we spend the rest of the day just hanging out eating food, watching sports, watching movies, and enjoying each other's company. And I will be stitching on this while I do that because lots of block stitching is the perfect project for a really relaxed day of just hanging out with your family, eating lots of food. I think it's why ultimately I really enjoy the holidays so much. Part of it is this and the fun of making new things for this and getting to hang out with my fabulous sparkly tree. But it's also that it's really low key and there's no pressure. We just hang out and enjoy spending time together. And that's a really fun thing that doesn't make the holidays stressful. So. Stacey Nash, wonderful life, pink keep drum. It will be the Christmas in July floss tube kit, but I'm not planning on stitching ornaments. And I do actually have another ornament finish to share with you, although necessary disclaimer, this is just for everybody's personal enjoyment. It won't be a kit or a tutorial or a pattern. Not humanly possible. And that is my version of this fabulous card from Rifle Paper Company. I love the nutcracker as i think i've mentioned before my mom took me every year to see the ballet when i was a child we would get all dressed up she would make me a special new outfit we'd go out to lunch then we would see the nutcracker and it was a really special mother-daughter time and you know as a little girl at least for me there was something about getting all dressed up and getting to spend special time with my mom that i really loved and so the nutcracker always brings back good memories at christmas whether it's a card or it's an ornament on the tree or it's listening to the nutcracker suite which seriously i do all of this ever so when this came out i could not resist buying it and then making my own version to hang on the tree and that is this guy a little smaller than the card i scaled him down just a little bit but still pretty big he's quite a bodacious ornament but the larger size did allow me to work in more fabulous and sparkly details so one thing i will tell you about embellished applique a la katie is that it benefits from throwing a ton of different materials at it so i've taken just felt and I've over embellished it with metallic braid, with bijou, with sequins and beads, bugle beads, twisted bugle beads, rhinestones, more beads and sequins, 
and then heat transfer vinyl, which is my secret to gold felt. Felt doesn't come like this. You buy heat transfer vinyl, looks like this. I don't know the name of the product because I cut it off when I was opening it several years ago. You buy it at Michael's. Take it, you iron it on to gold color felt, and then real metallic for your wool. Looks fabulous. Hot tip. Anyways, so basically you take all of those things, you pile as much of them onto your felt as humanly possible, and then you wallow like a pig and sparkle. So this is a photo of my work table. <laughs> While I was making this, not everything on here ended up on my ornament, but I like to just dump my, my stash on my table, play around with it, and see what ends up on my piece. So much fun. Everything on this guy actually was from stash. I didn't purchase anything to make this ornament except the card. And then just as an illustration of scale, I wanted to show you three versions of my rifle paper company nutcrackers that I've done in felt. The first and smallest is the guy on my nutcracker tree decoration. So I showed this last year with my mom. So yes, I made two, one mother daughter outings and he's the same general form, but way less detailed. This, the strength of this piece is really the bijou under stitching and then all those rhinestones I've stuck everywhere. So that's bijou malachite and doing two of these is how I managed to use up so many spools. So as you can see, way smaller, but still a favorite. Actually, I think that go really well. And then this is a smaller ornament for my tree that I made a few years ago. So he's got some of the same details, the bugle beads on the epaulets, the beads for the nutcracker mouth, the detailing on his uniform, but he is a much, much simpler version because he's so much smaller. There's just only so much that you can do. But getting to go ham on this has made me think that I need to revisit some of my other small ornaments and make them ginormous because seriously, this is so much fun. And then I am going to talk about sequins for a hot minute because I know that there's been a lot of interest in my use of sequins, both in Baby It's Cold Outside and other sparkle frame. It's, it's over there. I can't reach it. I'm not in my usual setup. I'm all jumbled and on my embellished wall applique. So true confessions here. I bought most of my sequins from a local needlepoint focused needlework store in San Mateo that had closed during the pandemic. And I would promptly get them and then decant them into containers and label them in really unhelpful ways like gold five point star that tells you nothing about where you might be able to purchase this because it legit never occurred to me that one day I would be sharing my felt and sequin creations and that anyone would care about what I used to make them. Seriously, never would have imagined it. So. My best recommendation on sequins is to seek out needlework sources because they're sized for needlework. Embellishment is much more a part of the DNA of needlepoint than it is of cross stitch, but the scale is similar. So those materials cross over really well to wool applique or to cross stitch. So, as I said, the store where I purchased most of my stash has gone under, but a friend was able to recommend an online store called Bedecked and Bead Dazzled. I will put that in the description. She said they're great and I believe they do have plenty of sequins. So that would be my recommendation on where to look for sequins, whether you want to have some fun with felt or you want to have some fun with your cross stitch. Some other sources that I recommend that I use myself are Caravan Beads, 
for seed beads, bugle beads, etc., and then art beads for crystals and rhinestones. And then I'll share a few of the other fun sparkly threads that I really recommend for jazzing up either your cross stitch or your wool applique. In the description, I have so much fun with this metallic cord. Oh boy, it's on everything. Anyways, and then, oh, for more information specifically on my methods on wool applique, I would recommend Theodora last year's wool felt applique ornament, still available in my shop. And with that, let's get to haul, because I do have some haul. Not very much, but it's pretty good, and... Well, you've seen it all if you already watched The Attic Snow Floss Tube. Did everybody watch The Attic Snow Floss Tube? I hope that you did because it was awesome. And I bought the things that Jean told me I needed to have. Actually, these were all in order already, but you know, everybody needs to have them because Jean said so. And these are the new 48 count Legacy Linens. So the first is Bride Cake. This is a rich cream color. Mm, really nice, like that. And then March Pain. This is like the old dye lot of Sicilian Marzipan before it turned a little more cream. And I have to tell you guys, I love really subtle neutrals because colors show up so well on them. So yeah, itching to get stitching with these two. I've got fat halves. I think I might actually need the yards, so yeah, probably gonna order that. And then the other things that I ordered because Jean told me I needed to have them were three old catalogs from Whitney Antiques. I mean, that wasn't a very hard sell in all honesty that were featured on her cap, so featured on her floss too. So I have the most recent catalogs from Whitney Antiques, Choice and Precious Work, which we just talked about, and then last year's band sampler catalog, I write the needles praise, but these weren't available in the US until recently. And so, yeah, I bought them all. These are going to be my reading on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, because honestly, after I get home, after all the like fun family time, it must feel a little bit flat. So I need a treat to look forward to. And I am saving these up for that. Friends, a common thread. Quakers and needlework, specifically 17th century needlework. And I don't know if this goes that early. I don't think it does. Really, really interesting influence on the history of 17th century needlework and embroidery in particular. Embroidered lives and family threads, three centuries of historic samplers. Definitely goes back as far as I would like it to go back. You know, I love all types of needlework from all areas of history, but the 17th century is really what speaks to me, which is why I definitely had to have for pleasure an ornament. So if you've been watching me recently, you might actually recognize that parrot. He was in the inspiration book for my current casket project. And so this focuses on pieces from 1580 to 1835, has so much fabulous eye candy. So these are my treats that I am saving up for myself for Christmas Eve and Christmas night. And that is all of my stitching related haul. And then I'm going to show you my special haul, which does have a story behind it. Okay, so my last bit of haul is a little something special. It has a story along to go to go along with it. We're gonna have story time. So I hope you've got your stitching out because this might be a little disjointed. It starts several years ago when I went to a bougie home store that always has really fabulous Christmas displays. I went in to see what they had up for that year because I love looking at anything Christmas, even if it's not my style at all, because I go for sparkly kitschy and mismatched, but I love seeing all kinds of different holiday inspiration. 
I walked in, I saw this like 10 footer covered with these amazing ornaments and I was just overwhelmed. It was one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen. I was so overawed actually that I didn't get out my phone and take a photo and I've been kicking myself ever since. But what it was, was like a fantasy woodland nature tree. They had wired all kinds of extra greenery and flowers and berries into the tree itself and then they had covered every inch of it with these spectacular Polish glass ornaments. I was enchanted. I immediately wanted one of these in my house and I walked up to the tree. I looked at one of the price tags and oh, realized I was totally not going to have a tree. I wasn't even going to have one of the ornaments. So I trotted home. I bookmarked their website and I kept on checking back during the entire month of December, hoping that those would go on sale because crazy expensive, handmade Polish glass basically. And nothing, nothing, nothing. I thought they were gonna die on that hill. And then I got home after Christmas that year. I was getting ready for bed, I was winding down, I checked my email and it hit my inbox. Holiday now on sale. I went straight to the website and I got myself a little set of ornaments because, oh, even at 65% off, still pretty eye-watering if you're getting multiples. And it's actually the only time I've ever bought myself anything on Christmas. Usually I just come home, you know, ready to go to bed after all the fun of the day and that's it. No judgment if you do buy yourself stuff on Christmas. I probably don't think about it because I get lovely and thoughtful gifts from my family, so nothing's ever wanting. But on this year, I took the chance to buy myself some fabulous nature, glass, flower, leafy, glitter things made in Poland. They're on little clips. Mm, this is a Oh, literally, it's got a little caterpillar on it. They're amazingly detailed. They're just works of art. So you can imagine what an entire tree filled with leaves and flowers and all this glittering glass looks like. And then I bought a little tiny tabletop tree to display it on because I use a real tree and by the end of the season, this thing starts drooping. You do not want your crazy expensive ornaments listing and maybe falling. So I bought a fake pre-lit tree and then I carefully arranged my ornaments on it when everything came and I was just horrified. It looked so sparse. It looked nothing like the fabulous 10 footer vision that I had. So in intervening years, I found different ways to fill it out. And now look up for me stitching because I'm gonna insert some photos. I'm not bringing this thing out to the camera because you know me, I would drop it and then there would be tears. So I wired in glittering branches. I actually think I could do some more with that to make this look even more bodacious. And my mother made me a sparkling hummingbird ornament to go with the nature theme. I found some little vintage mushroom clip ornaments to put on the branches. Those really helped fold it, fill it out. And it was all looking pretty great until this year, I finally found another place to get these. So not only are they stupid expensive, they're also really hard to find. Nobody carries these. I guess nobody like crazy, fantasy flower or expensive glass things are just not a trend with American Christmases, but I think they're amazing. And so my present to myself for all my, you know, crazy holiday kidding season was to buy a couple new flower ornaments for my tree. And I wanted to share these with you, even though they are not stitching related, just because I think they're beautiful. And they make for such a spectacular decoration. I frequently keep this up after the season. One, because it's artificial, it doesn't go bad. And it's kind of a seasonal. I think of it as a holiday decoration because I always remember walking into that store and being overawed by 10 feet of majestic glittering glass. 
but it's just beautiful. So this tree is continuing to evolve. If I do find other ways to add to it, I will continue to share them with you as the years pass. But they are expensive and as I said, pretty hard to find. So I wouldn't expect too many more, at least of the glass ornaments to get added to the tree. But you know, as I'm recalling what the original looked like, I'm thinking it might find more ways to embellish the tree itself. So I've set it just in a tart pan, covered the base of the tree with moss, and then the little snail is an inexpensive ornament that I found that just felt consistent with, you know, the really fancy ones. <laughs> That's the secret here. You gotta mix high and low, or unless your name is Jeff Bezos and you can afford 10 feet of glittering Polish glass. But that is my one decoration that you haven't really seen so far. I really focus on handmade, as you can see behind me. But if it's really special, there's a place for it. I mean, this is a little too classy for a Katie Christmas, but I love it all the same. Which does kind of bring us towards the end of this episode. I have a couple final things for you. The first is Queen Anne's Pin Polo has now sold out and class begins on January 1st to for my fabulous students. So I have opened an interest list for this. I will link it in the description. You can also find it on the Pin Polo page on my website. If you are interested in seeing this class run again in the future, I would really encourage you to sign up. I can't guarantee anything because I have to have enough students to be able to manufacture the threads needed. But if you'd like to see it again, please do sign up for the notification list. If you are in the class, um, all students will receive their login information at the end of December, and then a link to the first lesson on January 1st will hit your email. We are going to have a wonderful class. I am looking forward to it so much. And then my last big piece of news is that I crossed 7,000 subscribers this weekend, which is amazing. Thank you all so much for all of your support of my channel, of my kids, of my crazy felt pieces, of all the things that I do and that you've listened to me talk about. It really is amazing and crazy and wonderful and I'm so thankful for all of you. We'll be having a special giveaway to celebrate and to thank you all next time. I hope that you all have a beautiful and happy holiday, whatever you celebrate, if you celebrate, that you have time for comfort stitching and time spent with those that you love. And our family will be celebrating Christmas with food, laughter, and gag gifts, as well as stupid movies, but it'll be a really, really great time, and I'm looking forward to it hugely. I wish you, oh, so much joy and such a happy new year. I hope that 2024 is going to bring us all stitching and wonderful things and time spent with stitchy friends. I'm really looking forward to being at the attic for Sampler Symposium in January, but I will be seeing you again in two weeks for one last episode before I trek off to the attic. So I'll see you again in 2024. Spoiler alert, I'm still going to be stitching holiday. Until then, happy stitching.